not with that slide deck, because that's not me. Here I am. Yeah, um, thank you for having me back again. I think this is my eighth Moodle moot or something crazy like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit worried about following a Petra Kutcher session because now we've taken all the, uh, the heat out of it and that fast-paced delivery I quite like. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about something you know, that's quite close to, to my heart, really, which is design in general, but instructional design. And I figured one of the best things to talk about would be the Moodle lesson activity. So it's not a technical session at all. It's more just have a bit of fun and to, to discuss it, really, and, and go through some things. So um, I'm going to briefly discuss what we may already know about the lesson activity, what we don't know about the lesson activity, what the heck clusters and branches are, because that still confuses me. Um, I've got some lesson examples. I'm going to talk a little bit about style and templates. And if I'm still on time, some tips and tricks. And then there's a link to the downloads um, at the end of the presentation as well. Um, hands up, uh, is any, everybody using the lesson activity within their organization, at least? OK. Anybody dislike the lesson activity and refuse to use it? A few of you, three of you, I think. OK, that's interesting. So, well, the lesson activity is uh, a series of HTML web pages. OK, most of you have, have dabbled with this. Um, but the difference is it can contain links uh, and buttons that take you to different parts, um, of, you know, different pages, different areas within this lesson. Um, and lessons can contain information pages, branches, almost like choices, and question types as well. So you can create something that's really engaging, really personalized, and quite adaptive to the learner. These are what you probably didn't know about the lesson activity, um, and that you know these branching scenarios can be quite complex and they can be quite detailed and really create something that's that's not as linear as Moodle courses tend to be. You can also have file pop-ups, so when you load a lesson, a, a file will appear at the start. This could be a, a supporting PDF or something like that. It's got an on-screen progress bar and an on-screen scoring as well, which is quite nice. So some people drop into to scoring packages to create that kind of instructional design, that, that slide approach with, with progress. And you can do this in core Moodle. I'm not bashing SCORM. I'm going to do that tonight after the dinner. Um, <laughs> but I think there's a, there's a place for SCORM, but there's also a place for the lesson activity. It's one of those things, a bit like for me, like the workshop that people kind of bury down there. And really, you should really start to consider you know, giving it some thought. So you can also have menus, which is a table of contents. But what's really clever is you can choose when to show that when the user gets a specific score, which is quite nice. Um, you can also choose what activity triggers after somebody completes a lesson. So you can have a series of lessons that all interconnect. Um, so instead of taking that user out of the course into a lesson and taking them back into the course and having to find their way, there's a more logical progression as it takes into the next activity. And also you can do conditional release also based on the time spent in previous lessons. So if guided learning hours is your thing and you're a box ticker for, for those kind of things, the lesson's got some benefits in there as well. You can add content pages, which we'll discuss. You can add clusters, you can add branches, and you can add question types. It's not a replacement for the quiz um, activity, and I don't think it ever will be. It's not designed for that. It's just there is an assessment element in here that you can use, and it does support feedback as well. You can use multiple choice, essay, matching, numerical, short answer, and true and false. So what makes up a lesson? Um, you've basically got a challenge, a choice, and a consequence. Um, and the challenge is, what do you want that learner to do? What do you want that learner to achieve? Um, what choices are we going to give them? And then depending on what they choose, where do we take them? And I think that's something that we do in everyday teaching in the classroom. We present a challenge. We let the students discuss that. We let them think about that. And then there's an outcome, a learning outcome associated with that. Here's a really crude example. Um, but the challenge is to fight the dragon. If you fight it with a stick, a sword or a carrot, well, if you choose a stick, the dragon will laugh at you. If you choose a sword, you can slay it. If you choose a carrot, it might eat it. But every scenario can, can lead to a different outcome. And that's what's so great about the, uh, the lesson activity. This is a really simple lesson structure. So we haven't really got any branches or, or clusters as such in there. We've got a, a simple content page. The learner has to make a choice, depending on that choice, takes them to a simple page, back to a question to assess them, and then the lesson ends. And that's a really simple diagram of, of when you're thinking about the lesson activity. And how you plan a lesson activity all depends on, on, 
on how you work, really. We were discussing this last night over dinner, and some people use post-it notes on a wall to actually plan where they're going to go on this lesson. Some people use a whiteboard. Uh, some people might just keep that in their head. So a cluster or a branch. Um, I think this is improved in Moodle, particularly in Moodle 2. It's got a lot easier to, to understand. But basically, a cluster is a series of question slides, if you like. And then you can choose to randomize those questions or, or jump to an unseen question somewhere in the lesson, whereas a branch is, is more of a collection of, of the HTML pages. And that's how I distinguish between them as well. So branches are like chapters in a book. And if you use the book module, then you've already got some, some skills that you can build upon when you're looking at a lesson activity. So this is a more advanced lesson structure. Um, again, content page, an introduction, text the user to a choice. Do they want to, to, to understand a math concept, if this is a, a key skill subject, for example? And then you can unlock math content and math questions, or maybe they head down the English route, and you can give them uh, some English information, English questions and things. But ultimately, you've got one goal, and so there is an end to, to the lesson. So here's one I prepared earlier in true Blue Beta style. Uh, this is called the interview. Um, and basically, it's a, a story, it's a, an adventure, it's a game, uh, and it's a job interview for students. Uh, and I just think the lesson activity leads well to anything like this, whether you're doing teaching customer services in a college or in a university, giving them um, pathways that they can take to change the outcome, I think is really exciting, it's really engaging. Um, so this is just a standard Moodle theme, but there's a little bit of CSS just to, to make the buttons a bit bigger and make the progress bar a bit greener and all those kind of things. But you can see the points on the top, and you can see uh, the progress bar that's going to start to kick in at the bottom. Um, and you basically have to prepare for a job interview, get ready, and go to the interview and answer a series of questions. The better the answers, the better the chances of getting the job. Um, so it's little things like on the, on the bus to the interview, did you bring your CV with you? If you did and you brought a copy, you can say, yes, I did. And it'll give you that feedback. And it'll say, that's great. This is why it's great. And then you can progress to, to the next stage on the interview. And you can notice the percentage bar is increasing on there as well. What are your key personality strengths? You can put in all those cliche interview questions that everybody hates in there. And how well that student answers it determines whether or not you got the job. I actually changed that in the final uh, um, release of this and, and the, my idea is to give all the students points and then give them a little leaderboard whoever's top of the leaderboard gets the job and if you don't then you didn't get the job um, but um, how would we do for time four minutes so uh, as a child I am um, anybody a child in the 80s remember the BBC microcomputer yeah one of my favorite games on there as a kid was this thing called granny's garden and it was a text-based adventure um, and I did a bit of research on this just for this um, presentation I say research, I went on Wikipedia, and <laughs> apparently, according to Wikipedia, which is the truth, Granny's Garden was one of the first uh, games, really, that UK teachers actually realised that computers had a place in the classroom, and you basically had to, I think you had to rescue people and uh, fight a witch at the end, from what I remember. There's lots of puzzles and problems that you had to solve, um, so it was little things like, um, you know, you face with a witch, what do you want to do? And you have to type, feed the apple to the witch, and those kind of things to, to progress. Um, and I think the lesson activity can, can work like that. And, and that had a, a resonating effect on me, because it was a game where we were solving puzzles. And we can sort of bring that into Moodle. Um, so this is a, a little adventure game. You can download this and see if you can get to the end as well. Um, but what item do you want to feed the snake? Do you choose the apple, or do you choose your socks? If you choose your socks, the snake doesn't eat the socks. And you then have to go back and feed it the apple, and then you can get past. Um, and you can play the full game if you geeky like me. Um, so let's briefly talk about styling. So one of the, I think the, the problems with the lesson is some teachers aren't the most graphically um, inclined people, and so they'll throw some content on there, throw an image on there, and the lesson doesn't look too inspiring. But there's a fantastic plugin called uh, Atto Styles, which you may have not seen. You can have predefined CSS. So if you have these, if you have this plugin, you have some predefined CSS, then you can change background colors. You can put things in borders, little speech bubbles, and all those kind of things. So you can use pre-built styles for backgrounds, for headings, callouts, and things. So you can start to make it look a bit gamified. Uh, and if you've got somebody who can do some CSS in themes, then you could you could insert those themes into that um, that editor, um, and then the teacher can can choose and make it look a little bit more engaging. So lastly, just a couple of tips and tricks um, for the lesson. One of the things that I hear a lot is um, academics want their, their students to actually watch a video or to spend a certain amount of time in it. And 
even though you can do conditional release, um, you know, saying if you've looked at that resource, that web page, then move on to something else, if it's that time tracking element, well, the, the lesson lets you do that. It lets you calculate time secretly in the background somewhere. It's actually a login time. There's no way to see that on the front end yet, but um, you could say, I want the student to have spent 30 minutes in this lesson. Now, they could still press play on that video and go make a cup of tea or whatever they're going to go do and then pretend they've watched it, but it's, it's just another example of some of the sneaky things you can do uh, with lessons. Also, um, the whole scroll of death argument where, where people are saying there's too many resources on my course, you know, consider collapsing things inside a lesson. Consider actually putting some resources in there. You can attach, obviously, files with, within the, the browser, within the editor anyway. Um, but you, know, you can collapse all that information, make a series of, of videos and all kinds of things. Um, and another tip is, I've got one minute left, uh, is just to you know, create template lessons. We talked about template in earlier template courses. Create some template lessons um, you know, with, with ready-made um, areas and, and elements in there as well. That's the download for the files. Um, if you want to go and download those, that interview, uh, and I'll share the CSS that I've used as well, but I forgot to put that in the, in the GitHub. Thank you.